and wrap things up here so we can get to your questions. So the benefits for OER uh, through the words of our own open educators. And um, this is Megan, who is a curriculum designer at a public school system outside of St. Louis called Parkway School District. And they contacted us a couple years ago. This is happening all over the United States because as I mentioned in the beginning, um, textbooks are a real problem because people simply don't have them anymore. They're not available or they're not enough to go around. So this was a crisis in the Parkway School District and Megan got in touch with us and said, I'd like to go open. I'd like to adopt OER, but where are they and how do I do it? And so they started creating their own. Um, they created a, a, a multi-year project with a a team of uh, their own teachers from the district. And of course, this is a huge undertaking, but I told them, you don't have to do it all by yourself. That's the whole point of sharing. That's the whole point of OER is that we help each other out. And um, yeah, so uh, she says here that we've coupled OER with 90% target language use. And that was really the driving force there. They, they wanted to create materials that would keep the students in the target language. Um, Ignacio was a graduate student in, in a program in, in anthropology, and now he's finished and he's a professor at the University of Kansas. And he works, uh, works on the Quiche language, so an indigenous language in, uh, in spoken in Guatemala. And um, what he was amazed by was that, um, was how once you create materials or create something and then give it to the world, so many people start to find out about it and it creates word of mouth. And he wrote this, this is actually a little blurb. He wrote that, that they were amazed when they finished the Quiche course. Again, this is a, a less commonly taught language. It's an indigenous language spoken by about a million people in, in Guatemala. Um, and within a year, they had over 75,000 view, uh, uh, views. So it has been adopted now by Mexican universities that are using it as their primary text to teach Quiche. Um, this is from a, a, a Chinese uh, instructor uh, teaching, I believe, in, in kindergarten or elementary school level, and she created a lesson. Um, but for her, it was really about being a member of a community of other teachers who were sharing their ideas. So by creating the materials and sharing the process with other people, she got new ideas uh, as being a member of, of a kind of a collaborative team. And finally, I say this again and again and again, it really has reduced the cost for students. Um, at the University of Texas, I'm in the French department, we've saved our students now more than $3 million. Uh, and that's a lot of money. If we think about it in our first year program, we've, we've created our own materials. And if you think about um, how a textbook can be about $200 per person, that's a, over time, that's a huge savings. Uh, this is a really cool idea. I wanted to add this slide here, this notion of you can create materials with your students. In other words, involve the students in the creation of the materials themselves, because sometimes if we're trying to create student-centered materials, why not have them be co-authors with us? This was a project by a professor at uh, University of Oklahoma of course, it's an upper level uh, a Spanish literature class, but she was teaching them about anthologies uh, as a genre, and she gave them various texts. Uh, she taught them how to write then um, interpretations of the text and to create their own uh, anthology, and then they published it. They went through the, the actual steps of, of editing it with native speakers and then finally publishing it. So yeah, the idea here is to create